Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, Alexander, you're going to give us a presentation about artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. what it can do, what it cannot do, and how it can help you get more um, money from... They save more money from whatever. S save money that you can then apply to something else useful. That was it. Probably. Good something luck. like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me once again. Love being here. Um, the uh, topic I'm going to be talking about is artificial intelligence and broadband cable. That is broad enough, right? But uh, specifying it using mathematical optimization. And that's the tool I'm going to be introducing um, to you. Um, my name is Alex. I'm managing director of what's called the Adams Group of Companies. Um, in this case, I'm representing my department of optimization and analytics. And Adams is a company that's 180 people strong, usually mostly guys. Um, one third engineers, eggheads, so to say, and two thirds uh, service technicians, people who know what they're doing, who actually can touch a, t a system without having this thing go offline. You shouldn't let me do that. Um, now a little story, uh, why mathematical optimization? Well, because engineers love math, that's, that's true. Um, uh, four years ago, I took on board two PhDs in math, mathematics, ma mathematics IT, right? And they specialize on this. And they need, basically need a roof, a company that they could work uh, under, and they had a bunch of projects as well that they brought. And this is applicable to any kind of process, this mathematical optimization. I took them aboard, and then I thought, well, maybe we could apply their talent to something that's useful for us, for broadband communications, and every now and then we do something um, in our field to better our world, and that's what I'm going to be talking about here. Um, how do I actually get this thing forward? Click it? Yes. Okay. Um, but first of all, I'm an engineer, so I've got to start out with some kind of definition. Where is the beginning of the slide saver? Okay. Um, what is artificial intelligence? Let's define it. There's a bunch of definitions around, but we all agree. They all agree. It's... Um, it's intelligence that mimics cognitive functions that humans associate with what's closest to us, the human mind, right? Such as learning and problem solving. Every now and then, we humans succeed in that. So I found this here last, uh, well, I saw this last week uh, in Singapore, 5G conference. Somebody was talking about this. I had this great slide. Well, I copied it. I, I made it myself, uh, right? took the idea. Artificial intelligence, it was very nicely uh, put, is one field, and it's got a bunch of subgroups there. Right? Machine learning is one. It finds patterns in data. Well, artificial intelligence is just really a program, a computer application, that senses, reasons, and adapts, makes sense of data. Because one thing we have is we have a bunch of devices out there, millions, billions of devices, collecting data, and we're just making sense of one or two percent of that. The rest kind of goes unnoticed or unevaluated. Deep learning, again, is a subgroup of machine learning. And what I'm introducing is mathematical optimization. Now, every, whenever we go and we think artificial intelligence, we think of something. The first thing, admit it, the first thing you think of is a little robot, right? A guy like this, I call him Mo, right? Has a head, has eyes, has hands, has feet. He does cute little human things with his hands, like carrying this box here, right? That's what we associate with. But artificial intelligence is more like that. It's evaluating and cranking data in a logical sense, in a reasonable, acceptable, acceptable amount of time, such that we can actually um, use it in our systems. If our result comes out two weeks later, it's most probably not good for us. So it's a tool. Mathematical optimization is a tool, and it looks like this. A whole bunch of discrete mathematics. That's why I keep it short here on the mathematical part. It's more like saying, here is MO. This is the box, it's cool, and that's how you, how you can apply it. So you go, guys don't leave the room in 30 seconds once I go math. So we agree, this is data, cranking data. Here's Mo again. Usually I call my animated figures Charlie, but this one is Mo, right, Mo? So how do we go about data cranking? It's relatively uh, straightforward, right? We have clouds, cloud storage is cheap, it's unlimited practically. Uh, we collect data, there's gonna be, I don't know, what's the predictions, 100 billion devices within the next, I don't know, two years. Internet of Things, industrial Internet of Things coming up. So we're collecting data, and that's cheap as well. And it's not only the big Googles, Amazons, Facebooks, these big giants that are collecting our data and then tracking how we live. Every company, like an MSO, for example, tracks data of their customers as well, or of their network. So we all do that. Edward Snowden here said, once you have the data, we can do things that could not have been done before. I disagree. Well, I do agree, but he omits the one point. Well, first you get the data, then you evaluate the data, you make sense of it and then you do things that you did, never did before. 
For us, that means predictive maintenance from operating data of machines. We call that proactive network maintenance. We can apply this uh, mathematical optimization techniques to that, but to any other process that develops in time. Or we can do increasingly accurate predictions of our customer behavior, for example, if we want to sell a new service. We go to know where to optimally place that. So let's uh, define this mathematical optimization animal. It's a tool, and it's discrete mathematics. It is an algorithmic approach. It's basically based upon mathematical models. It takes any kind of process, any kind of process, it doesn't have to be broadband communications, it can be logistics, it can be anything that develops over time, and breaks this down into a layered structure, a layered model reduction that uh, basically has a bunch of layers reduced to zero, one decisions. That's a very broad explanation of this. Um, but it, it considers all possible actions and decisions, it evaluates these in a smart fashion, and it is a, uh, a clever algorithm, it learns, it exhibits a learning curve, a really very fast one, and well, that's artificial intelligence. Eventually, this mathematical optimization algorithm, or these algorithms that you are applying, you're taking the data of a system, you're putting it into a different system, into a computer, you're letting this MO run on it, and then you bring the result back into the system where you want to apply it. Um, eventually, this MO is going to compute you an optimal decision, relatively fast provides a guarantee on the quality of the computer decision, and also computes the impact of that chosen decision on your system. The question I was just asking, what is the, the difference? And this system can say, if you're new MO in comparison to not MO, you're going to be having 18% increase in efficiency, for example, depending on the boundary conditions that you give and the system that you analyze, describe. So this allows for an increased degree of automation. Now, uh, to, to make this clear, uh, the, the mathematical optimization is very interesting. It's very intricate. It's hardcore math. And my guys look like hardcore math guys, too. They wear pledge shirts and that kind of stuff, right? And uh, um, they came with projects. For example, one of the things they did is, uh, or we do in our department, um, is routing gas through pipelines for an energy uh, provider in, in northern Germany. Uh, optimize the gas flow through a pipeline system, or optimize the distribution of chocolate distribution for one of the major chocolate that produces worldwide to German stores in Christmas and in, in, uh, in Easter time. How do you get the Easter bunnies most efficient to the stores? That's an optimization problem. We solved it. And um, when you have a department like that and you say, well, what can I optimize in my surrounding? We run home to mama as integrators, right, or as engineers. If we have guys driving around servicing networks, I'm going to go and do the old vehicle routing problem and optimize that. So bear with me. I know you've seen lots of presentations on vehicle routing, but this one is cool. I mean, they're all cool, but this one has a message. Um, we're going to do a computer-aided optimized. We, we did not going to do. We did a uh, computer-aided optimized planning given our orders addresses, order types, due dates, and all that, and also given our technicians. What's their qualifications, availabilities, uh, what kind of car do they have, with what measurement, measurement equipment, what equipment on the car, what can they do? And the approach is to do an integrated processing of all data with boundary condition tasks, boundary condition personnel, for a given period, a day, for example. So this mathematical optimization algorithm, working on our routing, will spit out for each technician, a, a schedule of jobs he is supposed to do that day with time windows and the routes he's supposed to take. And that is optimized. The system automatically computes optimal assignment of technicians to orders, optimal execution uh, sequence and time windows, first that one, and that one, and that one, and optimal routes. And if something should go wrong on the day, let's say a customer is not present at that point, although he said he was, the system can reschedule by re-optimizing that rest of the day. We're always running optimal. And you do that by tra taking the, the routing data, the, the uh, technician data, the order data, take it out of the system, work it in a, uh, in a separate computer, do the MO there, bring it back into, into the routing system. So it's applicable across an interface. And in real life, it looks like that. This is Frankfurt, Frankfurt on the mind. And you see, uh, this is a technician's uh, day route, this is a technician's day route, they're optimized. So it's a scheduling of multiple, 
um, heterogeneous vehicles here. You have an optimal assignment of your vehicle and drivers, to your destination, and your customers. And you do that with an optimal waypoint order. You can base our system on fastest or shortest routes. You can respect time windows. You can say, well, take half hour, one hour, one and a half hour sit windows, or you can make them flexible windows by having the system learn, okay, well, changing a tab lasts uh, 20 minutes, something like that. And uh, we apply to field uh, service technicians, but any kind of system where you have units, packets running around a network, like a car is on a street, um, that has to be at certain points and that you want to optimize, you can apply this kind of algorithm to. And you're going to have fast computation of high quality solutions. And as I say, this was basically, uh, let's, let's optimize our own world here, right? We actually have customers for this algorithm now. Because it uh, works very well, I was surprised myself. Um, because uh, for this routing, we always have potential for optimization, right? We have shorter and faster routes. If we use mathematical optimization, that reduces the travel costs of the guys on the road for, uh, for less time. He's going to spend less money driving. Um, we have more u efficient utilization of our human workforce, our technicians. And if we do all that correctly, we will have additional capacities because our, uh, our te techies are going to be done with their jobs for the day faster than they were beforehand, before we used uh, MO. So that means we're not sending home our tickets to the techies at 2 o'clock. That means I can do a, th a couple of, uh, of tickets more per day. And if you're automizing your system down to um, the system does the assignment of work orders to technicians, then your dispatcher already becomes uh, somebody who's a monitoring agent. He makes sure everything goes right. He doesn't do the dispatching himself anymore, or she, the person. So this is a highly efficient implementation, state-of-the-art mathematical optimization. We have an extremely high performance on this, and we get schedules with a quality, um, quality guarantee. That means the technicians um, will most, most, most likely be able to do their work as it is scheduled. Unless there's a backup in Frankfurt, you always have backups. But out of that. Modern web technology is the base of this, client server architecture. It's scalable, that's cool. And there's a seamless integration um, into virtually any existing software infra infrastructure possible with this approach, discrete mathematics. That's the cool thing about discrete mathematics, kind of like describes how computers work a little bit, yep. So this is what you've been burning for. He's been talking about his dispo system that he optimized. OK, um, so what's the gain on that? Well, first of all, we get a scheduling of field service technicians that we don't have to do ourselves anymore. And we took real life data from a service company in the broadband communication sector. I really like the service company because it was my own. Um, we took randomly to, to, to make the case, to develop the case, right? to develop this uh, um, system. Uh, we needed to have a data set that was somewhat uh, randomly picked, so we took uh, January to October 2015. We did this in 2016. Um, we took 10% of the work days, uh, such that we'd have minimum number of techies uh, 21, maximum number of techies 37 in that part of the network that we're doing this on per day, jobs, uh, techies uh, on, on jobs, and uh, 98 orders to 162 orders. So it's, it's normal, normal amount for that, that size of techies. And we had hard time windows ranging from a half an hour, one hour, one and a half hours, two hours, always half hour increases, increments. And we had dynamic windows where the system said, this takes us long, I've learned this. Dynamic windows is cooler, it's, uh, it's better. We'll see. So, a long talking. He hasn't talked about uh, how this, uh, this is done mathematically at all, thanks God, because that clears a room in 30 seconds. Um, but this is interesting. Reduce travel time. And uh, I have this dispo system, or I have this, uh, this system of, of having to, to route my techies to jobs beforehand, and I have it afterwards, so I can compare before and after. And uh, if you look at the travel time reduction here, if this is our, our before here, because we're looking reduction, um, optimized, with given time windows, we have 29.91% travel time reduction with dynamic windows. It's a window that the system, by uh, what it learned, applies to jobs, we are reducing travel time by 41.44%, which ties in directly into dollars, euros, pounds, travel cost reduction. Check this out. With, with uh, optimized, uh, with, with given time windows, 33%. With, uh, with flexible windows, 46.13%. And when I saw that number, I loved my guys. 
because this means my truck roll has probably reduced by 50%. That's pretty cool if you're in a service company or part of your company does service, the integration. And only, and you don't have to touch anything, you just have to do mathematics with it. And this pace, I mean, it's not a pace, it's, it's, a, um, it's underlined by, by, by real life. These numbers check up in operation. Reduction of numbers of technicians needed in constant order volume. If I have my given time windows, I reduce 11%. So my basically, my, my techie is done in 89% of the time, when, if you used 100% of the time before I um, uh, implored this. And with optimized time windows, I reduce about 25%. Basically, if my technician has a day from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock in, in the afternoon, 8 o'clock in the morning uh, to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, um, and he would take, he took all day to do his jobs yesterday, if he now takes m um, mathematical optimization and this kind of thing, he's going to be done at 2 o'clock, and you have two more hours uh, until th that you can fill his work schedule with. Pretty cool, huh? My techies don't like that very much, but good. So, in summary, what I said before, Given time windows, travel cost reduction 33, time, time reduction 27, and 100% of the orders done by, by 89% of the technicians, meaning 11% increase in efficiency. Optimal assignments with, uh, well, with, with flexible time windows, 46%, 41%, and reduction by 25%. That's why we actually uh, have a couple of customers, because they saw those numbers too and say, hey, we want to try that, and they also say, hey, this works great. Um, with that, basically, feedback, uh, we said, well, okay, let's try this with something a little bit more uh, intricate, right? Um, profile management applications for DOCSIS 3.1. Now, this is relatively complicated. What does a profile management application do? Well, it determines the optimum modulation orders applied to subcarriers um, of a DOCSIS 3.1 channel. And there's a whole bunch of subcarriers in there. There can be thousands of subcarriers in there. Um, so basically, uh, a profile, what is a profile? Well, there's uh, ambivalent kind of uh, explanations around there. It depends a little bit on what you look at. If you look at the CMTS and uh, the cable modem, if you're looking at the channel itself. Um, there are 16 of these, uh, of these modulation orders defined per port of a CMTS um, that can be applied. Uh, but for data profiles, you only uh, apply around about four, four or five that makes most sense with 3DB, um, 3DB differences between. And what you want to do now is you want to find a set of optimal modulation orders that maximize the throughput. As you could see here on this, on this DOCSIS 3.1 channel, there, there's one here that goes from here to here. You have an exclusion band in there uh, and over here. And these are modulated subcarriers. You have a PLC. And what your profile, what your um, PMA now does, which is an external engine, and it's meant to be like that from the, from the, uh, from the spec, that extracts the data out of the CMTS communication data, which modem wants to, say, wants to say what or wants to receive what, uh, out of the CMTS, does the optimization on it, and finds an optimal loading of subcarriers, of modulation orders on subcarriers for pretty much each instant in time. Which means the PMA will maximize the throughput on this DOCSIS 3.1 downstream channel here. Upstream works the same way. Downstream channel which means PMN, PMA, the PMA application run with mathematical optimization is going to ensure that you are pumping as much data through your DOCSIS channel as, is possible, as, is, as it's possible. And that's what you want to do. So, mind you, this DOCSIS 3.1 is, uh, as I said, uh, based on subcarriers, on OFDM, and if we use an AKFFT, we're going to have 7,600 of these active subcarriers, a maximum. So we're talking about an intricate problem here. Because oops, uh, we have 16 possible QAM modulation orders. Now we're, we're working out the maximum number. This is a great example to, to, let you to, to demonstrate that mathematical optimization reduces numbers that are somewhere close to infinity. Well, it's nothing is close to infinity, right? Nobody counts to infinity un unless you're Chuck Norris. He did it twice. But um, if you have 16 possible core modulations and you've got 7,600 possible active subcarriers, and you basically got to find a picture at every instant, how do you modulate each of these individual subcarriers? Click, 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 the different modulations. 
you will have 16, 16 to the 7,600 possible different combinations across the channel all the time. 7,600 subcarriers, 16, uh, 16 uh, modulation orders per subcarrier, then 16 to the 7,600. But for comparison, the number of atoms in the universe is estimated about 10 to the 80. So even if you have very, very fast software, uh, soft and hardware, hardware um, silicon, because we can do this kind of uh, techniques only the past 10 years, 15 years, since we have the silicon to do these kinds of, com uh, of computations, right? But even 16 to the 7,600, you don't get reduced by just comp computing them through. You've got to smartly go through them and basically do zero, one decisions. Structure the problem into an into array of zero, one decisions. If something goes zero, everything following out is going to drop out of the problem. That's very broadly part of the approach. So mathematical optim optimization cleverly, uh, cleverly now reduces this large number, and it does result in the optimal profile application. Application of modulation orders to subcarriers go into the individual uh, modems and all that in an uh, acceptable time frame, always depending on which modem wants to receive or send data. We did case studies for that. We simulated this thing. I simulated this thing in a, a MATLAB Simulink. We did set it up in a lab, and we also got some real data for this, real network data for this. A 4K FFT, which is 3,800 possible subcarriers, and a DOCSIS 3.1 channel. Downstream modulation spectrum on these 190 megahertz maximum are only 46. A quarter of the channel is utilized. 90 to 9, 920 modulated uh, 50 kilohertz subcarriers. Um, continuous pilots. PPSK and PLCs, right? So every, all, the, all these boundary conditions for the channel were given, and we had about 560 modems. We had different numbers of modems in the simulation, um, but went up to 560. We took RxMER measurements, which is basically the CMTS uh, telling the modem, hey, show me your, how you see your downstream spectrum, which is really cool. That is a spectrum analyzer in every customer's house. And we did that on a six hourly basis, which is more data than they actually need. We had four data profiles defined on the channel for data transmission, uh, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 8, 2 to the 10, 2 to the, two to the 12, which makes it 64 QAM, 256, 1K QAM, and 4K QAM. Right? And simulating this, and this works the following way, like, like, like it did beforehand. You're fetching the modem data, which learns from, the, for, uh, learns from, from your network, right? You're getting the data, you're basically SNMPing it out of the, uh, the CMTS. You do your wizard work on it. You optimize bit loading profiles. You run this data through your mathematical optimization um, engine, through the model that you've created for this process. You optimize the, the, car, optimize the car network state, which goes fast if you have previous states that you can calculate upon. And then you apply this. You send this back into the CMTS to apply it, to send a, uh, basically send optimized profiles down the line. All mathematical optimization. And again, this is the reason why I'm not going into detail here. And if we are if we're doing this, how much time do we have? If we're doing this um, on the 46 megahertz that we uh, that we simulated this upon, so a quarter of a channel, we increased uh, roughly so almost uh, 60 megabits per second throughput increase, so which is 17 percent by applying mathematical op uh, optimization to the profile generation, to the loading generation. So if you take that uh, by four, if you say, well, if I extrapolate that to, to the big channel, to 192, uh, 192 megahertz channel, DOCSIS, full load of DOCSIS channel, I would gain over 200 megabits per second um, without modification of any network infrastructure just by doing smart, smart number crunching. On that, it's pretty good. You don't have to invest in any hardware. You just have to invest in somebody's brain. So that's the stuff we have done as far as broadband communication is concerned. Like Big stuffs. This is the next one. Here's our next project, Proactive Network Maintenance. What? That's a software tool that has been around for a few years now for maintaining and troubleshooting our HFC networks by analyzing, taking a second look at the pre-equalization coefficients that are being exchanged between uh, CMTSs and, and uh, cable modems to counteract, to mitigate any kind of disturbance on the, on the transmission path. And a PNM works on the analysis of this data between cable modems and CCAP. Its active network data is collected, extracted out of the uh, CMTS by SNMP, that will create quite big databases. And now you've got data, and you've got to make sense out of it. It's the usual problem that we have these days. So we're using our cable modems as continuous network probes, as little spectrum analyzers, which means we don't have to roll truck out there anymore. That will determine our network fault locations down to 
six feet, maybe three feet. That's pretty good. And it determines the time to future failure of passive and active equipment. Hey, this tap down there is going to be failing in four and a half weeks. Do something about it beforehand, because then your customer will not have realized. If it fails and your customer calls you, you have a problem. So PNM reduces empty truck rolls significantly, and big MSOs in the United States have saved eight, nine-digit figures on not performed truck rolls in the last years by employing a system like that. If you do ma um, mathematical optimization on that, what can you do? Well, we're brainstorming right now. Um, you will have to analyze the PNM data for regional areas and maybe combine that with the vehicle routing optimized system that I showed at the beginning of my presentation for optimized repair schedule according to time to failure measurements. If I have a routing system that says, well, uh, that, that, that gives an optimized route, maybe it can be flexible enough to say, well, I do have some time because this techie is now done faster than he was. Maybe you can take care of this one tap that's going to be breaking in four weeks or something because he's just a mile away right now. You know, to to uh, combine these, uh, these two databases, that is the next, that is the next level um, of, of complication that I want to put into this system. So I want to combine plant truck rolls to the area. I want to reduce truck rolls. And my truck rolls only uh, is only 45% cheaper these days. I want to reduce uh, the unnecessary ones. Maybe I can combine with customer data, data and perform my mathematical optimization out of that. I could result in recommendations to my MSOs that I work for where to optimally go and invest in network expansion or an upgrade in the future. Hey, if you want to invest in your network over here is, as far as the uh, engineering and the technical parameters and the customer data is concerned, the best uh, place to, to get a return on investment on what you invest over there. Return real well. <laughs> Good. Um, and you can sequence upgrade measures. And you can get and make an estimate of, uh, on cost of upgrades. Um, but as I say, we're, we're just in the beginning of, of doing this, this PNM thing with mathematical optimization, so we're not quite sure what exactly we're going to put in. But this, uh, this kind of uh, summarizes the, uh, the power of, of that tool. It is something you can plan, it's something where you don't have to be of any kind of special knowledge of something. Well, it's actually beneficial if you're doing this, and well, I don't know anything about your, about your process. Tell me your process. And then somebody tells you your process, and you put that into mathematics. And you're trying to optimize on that. Well, you're not trying to, you will optimize. So this is a very powerful tool. And uh, since we are at a time in the industry where everything is converging and where it becomes more and more complicated to follow what's, what's being basically put out by cable apps and, and, and the industry, it's getting faster and faster, and you've got to make sense of that. And you've got to make sense of all that data that's coming out, Internet of Things, industry Internet of Things, Data collection is not the, not the point. It's making sense of the data that you're collecting. Right? So I see a wonderful future in mathematical optimization um, as we go along, as far as artificial intelligence is concerned, as part of uh, artificial intelligence. Um, we went over all that. And um, improvements, uh, when you're applying these algorithms across the line, no matter what, improvements, we usually say 15 to 20%. That's not unusual that once we run this through these algorithms, you are going to be 15 to 20 percent more efficient afterwards, or more. And uh, I touched on, on some of the uh, of the range of uh, of applications: proactive network maintenance, vehicle routing, um, profile management applications. But I think sky's the limit on this. So um, I think we're going to be seeing a, a whole bunch more of these kinds of uh, of applications. Maybe they're going to be called a little bit different, but I think this is going to be one of the main engines driving the uh, the analysis of data in the industry. And now I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> One thirteen. Correct. Yeah, you beat them all. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions for Alexander? Oh, I'll better no, stay here, right? Sorry. Take the questions. Yeah? yeah, yeah? yeah. If you, um, um, you talked about uh, mathematical optimization, mm -hmm. um, is there any subject in the telecoms industry where you think the benefits can be much more than 20% you estimate? What's uh, your gut feel? Vehicle routing, 45%. 45%. 
for example, what, what vehicle routing, for 45 percent, that's, that's a true number. My truck roll costs only 55 percent of what it used to cost if, okay. I, if I do this. Okay. And do, do you have any idea that when you look to the industry, which you of course did, um, is there still a lot to learn and earn by the current players? Or do they all implement your MO tools already by routing the uh, taggies? Well, I'm not sure if they all implement it. Um, uh, I'm sure it's, uh, it's part of the technology um, uh, in the industry somewhere. There is a lot to learn, I think, because, uh, but, but we still have to learn it. Because what this acts upon, as I said, this is an intelligent number cruncher. Right? This is a smart algorithm of making sense of a huge amount of data. And right now, we're, the avalanche of da data is starting, mm -hmm. right? the, the IoT. Um, the world of IoT. And I heard, uh, like last week in Singapore, they actually did some test si uh, system on IoT, and they had to switch it off, uh, like after four hours, because their sensors were just overblowing, uh, blowing the database, pretty much. So, um, so we're, we're at the beginning there. So, uh, as we are going into data analysis, as we're doing this deeper and deeper, I am pretty sure we're going to be bumping into this uh, MO uh, topic more and more. Okay, good to hear. Gabor. Sure, have any question? Um, I have two questions somewhat interrelated. <clears throat> First, once you use the term of MO, um, are your guys applying the same algorithm to various problems or it's really a selection of the best algorithm specific to the problem? That's one question. And I'll tell you why I'm asking the second one before answering to this one, is that I'm curious to learn if uh, you said the MO delivered about 40, 40 plus percent uh, for the route optimization. I'm curious to learn if, given the number of variables increasing, um, do you see a linear or logarithmic or exponential growth in the efficiency gain, what you would get? Yeah, that would uh, be great if you could have something like, uh, uh, like, like that, right? Oh, it's strictly exponential, strictly logarithmic. Um, hard to say across, across the, the lines. So could you say, the question as I interpret this is we using this, you're going to exponential growth or exponential increase in efficiency or logarithmic or something like that. Well, it's hard to, to say. If, if I'm curious to see if, if, if uh, you apply an MO to a problem which is not uh, dealing with tens of hundreds of variables like a ve vehicle routing, but once you have like you deal with uh, the obviously the uh, plant uh, addressing the, uh, the CMTS, CM uh, channel allocation, um, is a much more complex problem. Yes. Therefore, probably the efficiency gain is somewhat lower. But can I say that? Maybe not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, like, like every engineering aspect, the more boundary conditions you've got to consider, the, the more complicated it gets, and therefore the efficiency goes down. But that, I, uh, I haven't made the experience that there's a linear decrease, like you take one more variable and therefore you're going to go an equal step down. It's, just, it's, it's not like that. But in general, it holds, yeah, the more complicated it is, it gets the, it gets the more, uh, the less gain in efficiency you get. But it does depend very strongly on the boundary conditions that you're looking at. So again, solid answer for engineering depends on the, on the boundary conditions. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, two questions. Right. But uh, this relates to the first one. So yeah. therefore, are you modifying the algorithm itself once you say MO? Meaning that no. for certain cases, one approach might be better or the other one. Or is this, are you talking about a single algorithm which is applicable to various fields? No, no. Uh, I, I reduced it down because I didn't have any math to, to, well, I do have math to show, but as I say, this is, uh, I can't say this is so cool, look how, how this works, and then show, show um, show what we can do with it. So I just say, well, this is a box and this is what we do when we apply it. There is, there's a whole science behind it. There's a bunch of algorithms, there's a bunch of approaches. It's a little bit like stochastic approaches. It's uh, like uh, the approach is what, what makes, makes the game, right? Yep. It's okay. not like, like analysis, okay, this is a formula, this is a function, I can derive it. You gotta have the right approach to describing it. But, and there's a whole array. I mean, the, the introduction book, once I started with it four for, uh, years ago, these guys, oh, here's our basic Bible, and they gave me about the book, yay thick, and I've been studying it ever since. So there's a whole bunch of this, uh, these uh, mathematical tricks and techniques in that. The whole thing is called discrete mathematics, um, mathematical optimization. Okay. Right, Where can you, you buy the book? Where can you buy the book? Yeah. Um, good question. I can, uh, I can, I can uh, send the title around. If anybody's interested, please drop me a note. Okay. Oh, sorry, thank you. Given your time, Alexander, thank you for your uh, presentation. Um, right. Gabo, thank you. And Dominique, so big applause for the uh, speakers. Thank you. Um,
the shadow me the knowledge that they will stay for questions and answers um, of your um, well whatever you want them to ask related to telecoms um, thank you for your time thank you for being present um, thank you uh, SATE for uh, hosting this event I think there's something to share or drink with, uh, with each other there's some so you can stay you're not um, you no need to run stay and we have a, a small talk and see you think next year yeah thank you, thank you.